Hello, thank you guys so much for coming to this video today. I really appreciate it. It's gonna be an awesome video. We have the Vassal Hard Fork coming on June 29th. We have a confirmation from Charles. We're actually gonna have Charles in this video. We're gonna hear from him a little bit about the Vassal Hard Fork. And then following that, we're gonna be looking at the Vassal Hard Fork. What is it? Is there anything that you don't know that's coming in the Vassal Hard Fork that's gonna add a huge amount of utility to Cardano? We're gonna be going into all of that utility and also a few projects that may be launching shortly after the Vassal Hard Fork. On top of that, we've got an update from Ben Gortzel and the Sophia Robot. I look forward to that. Uh, it really is gonna be a great video. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, if you guys do enjoy it, make sure you click the like button, comment down below, subscribe, hit the notification bell. It does help me with this algorithm and it pushes this Cardano content out far and wide. You know, with the Vassal Hard Fork coming soon, we're really getting the utility there. You know, Cardano is something, uh, you know, that people need to know about at this point because uh, the narrative around it is completely incorrect and a lot of it's based on false you know beliefs and assumptions and we need to change that one video at a time and i'm, I'm trying to but if you guys stay till the end of the video we're going to be doing a giveaway uh to enter the giveaway wait till the end of the video you'll see how to enter the giveaway they're always great they're always awesome but let's jump right into the video today so i thought i'd start out with something uh, a little funny today you know before we go into the vassal hard fork and what that's going to bring you know this is actually from x mark Martin, and he says, meanwhile, on Vashon Island, and this is actually where uh, the Singularity Net folk are, and you can see uh, Ben Gortzel driving a car uh, with the Sophia robot. I just, I couldn't not include that. You know, maybe next week I might be going there and recording an in-person podcast, maybe a little bit of a demo. Uh, if you guys are interested in that, make sure you let me know down below. Say, please, please pay. Fly out to Vashon with Ben. I, I may, I may for you guys. So we had a you know a Twitter thread last week that talked about some negatives of DJed and did a little bit of a comparison between UST and you know Jed. Here I said it right for you. You can stop commenting. So you know a lot of people are starting to now be worried about Jed and you know this idea of an algorithmic stablecoin on Cardano because of what happened to UST and Luna. A lot of people lost a lot of money unfortunately, and they don't want to see that happen to Cardano users. And you know, this guy kind of raised the fact that there were a few similarities. However, there are a few differences. So today we're actually gonna be talking about some good things about Jed instead of some of the negative. And I, I really do like these guys, this guy's threads. Uh, they're very informative. He says, as promised, Jed, to start, I'll say some good things about Jed. It is probably the most advanced algorithmic stable coin out there. It is centralized under the Cody network, but doesn't have to be. It's a protocol that can be used by anyone. More nice things, Jed operates entirely on-chain, relying solely on the blockchain-based assets and smart contracts to achieve its objectives. So it is somewhat censorship resistant in the implementation for Cardano. It uses ADA to create Jed and Shen. Finally, it does maintain stability, but only within the proscribed boundaries. This is similar to conventional financial institutions, which are built to withstand stress scenarios but outside of those, they risk failure. Briefly, here's what makes Jed like UST. They both use the stablecoin and support coin risk model. Both are backed by volatile cryptocurrency. Both are from large centralized parties. The only difference that Jed's cushion is bigger. Now explaining Jed. Jed protocol is two assets, the Jed stablecoin and Shen, which is the support token. Both are backed by pools of ADA. The ratio of Shen to Jed is four to one. So minting one dollar of Jed costs five dollars worth of ADA. One dollar of ADA is put into the Jed pool and four is put into the Shen pool. To be clear, it doesn't cost the buyer of Jed five dollars. The buyer puts in one dollar plus the fees to mint Shen and mints Jed. Someone else puts four dollars worth of ADA into the Shen pool and mints Shen. The price of ADA goes down. ADA coins are moved from the Shen pool to top up the Jed pool. Then Jed holders will get more ADA for their $1 token if they cash out. If the price of ADA goes up, the Shen token holders keep that upside plus the minting fee. So that's an important part there. You know, Shen are essentially betting on ADA going up because that's where they're gonna get the upside. One annoyance of Shen is pays out gains from the support pool if the pool is funded over four to one and the minting of Jed halts if the pool is below four to one. Tolerance bands exist to allow for volatility, but with a big A to drop, Jed mints halting until you get more Shen. 
So that is really the big nuance between UST. There are definitely a few, but the halting aspect, uh, that is a, a big difference there. Let's explore why some would buy Shen, rephrasing above, buying Jed is shorting ADA, whereas buying Shen is going long on ADA. Why would someone use Shen to go long on ADA when they could just buy ADA and be long on ADA directly? Well, Shen holders keep any upside gains on the $4 of ADA they put in and upside from the ADA that the Jed buyers sent. In essence, by buying Shen, you get upside price exposure with a 25% boost, but the cost is that you bear all of the risk of ADA following. Another annoyance, I'm hearing Shen buyers won't get all the 25% boost, fees to the Cody network and others come out of the pool before they get their compensation for being downside risk. Interestingly, Shen is similar to a 125% levered long slash short hedge fund, but instead of paying interest to borrow ADA, they charge fees for minting Jed and charge fees for using it. Anyway, back to the fundamentals, is 400% of enough of a buffer to ensure that Jed holds its peg? Maybe, maybe not. Is the boost a good and fair economic trade-off for Shen to bear all of the losses? And these are questions. Recently, ADA reached a price that was more of an 80% drop from its all-time high. If Jed in circulation was minted when ADA was 310, it would have depleted the Shen pool at 62 cents. Low intraday price was 57 cents. Comparing it to all times high is, is, isn't exactly fair. That's true. However, these things do happen. Think about it. I mean, that happened pretty quickly. Uh, we will see all time highs like this again. No financial advice. Eventually, these pools have to prepare for that. Realistically, Jed and Shen would have been minting constantly at a variety of prices to see if Jed would have held the peg. The relevant comparison would be the weighted average price of ADA at mint time. In any case, we would have just demonstrated that real world conditions exist where Jed may lose its peg. Also, so we have demonstrated that there are conflicting incentives between Cody and General Shen holders. I'll get into the statistical analysis in a different thread, but four to one seems low given the historic volatility of ADA. Since passing $1 on 2 2021, it's only been a year since ADA passed the dollar again, you know. Uh, hopefully that makes you feel a little better. It is 24 days where the enterprise volatility exceeded 20%, maybe four to one was a compromise to make the leverage work. End of thread, as always, do your own research. I agree with that completely, and I really appreciate all the insights from Matthew. Jet is different from other algorithmic stable coins, more elegant but flawed. Jet is automated with smart contracts using ADA and has a bigger loss-absorbing buffer. But the price mismatch between USD and ADA can't be algorithmed away. One more thing, I'm interested in finding blind spots in my analysis, so if you guys see anything wrong with this, feel free uh, to point poke some holes in it, but I didn't. And this honestly made a lot of sense to me, and as I mentioned in my last video, there are good things in Jed and there are bad things, but it's not something that I personally am gonna be holding a lot of my net worth in, as there's a lot of risk in new things and a lot of risk uh, in stable coins specifically. I'm curious on your guys' thoughts about Jed. Feel free to comment them down below. Now let's go on to the Vassal Hard Fork. Sent. Vassal Hard Fork is still on schedule for June 29th. Uh, pipelining is going to be a huge performance improvement. So you just heard it from Charles in one of his most recent videos, specifically the video called Back from California. And he stated that we're going to get the Vassal Hard Fork on the 29th of June. So what is actually coming in the Vassal Hard Fork on the 29th? I had help from a few threads with this and a lot of good resources. So I'm gonna put Soraj on screen because his thread was very helpful with this. Um, so what is coming? Well, a lot, honestly, a lot is coming. And honestly, the momentum that IOG has created with these releases has me very confident about the future of Cardano. I mean, how long have we been waiting for ETH 2.0 to release? And, you know, they're doing something very complicated and very hard. And, you know, IOG used to be really slow, but they've built up momentum. And there's a lot of knowledge on the team now to get these releases out on time. So, you know, with this release and all of the releases moving forward, I'm very competent uh, in IOG's ability to deliver. So the first CIP we're going to be looking at is 33. And I'm going to keep this very simple. But when you interact with a Plutus script, what you have to do is actually store the entire script inside the transaction. And because of all of that data, it increases the cost of actually interacting with these scripts and it decreases the throughput on Cardano. So CIP 33 removes 
the requirement of submitting the entire script into the transaction. And the way that works is it allows reference scripts. You can push a script onto the chain and then you can interact with it via a reference. And this is a lot lighter weight than interacting with the entire you know, smart contract with all of the logic. So CIMP31 is another really important upgrade to Plutus coming in the Vazel hard fork. And this one's a bit more complicated, but datums in a transaction output provide a way to store and access information on the blockchain. However, currently they're constrained in a number of ways. In order to access the datums information, you have to spend the output that the datum is attached to. And this requires the recreation of the spin output. In practice, this throttles some applications to one operation per block. I'm sure you've heard of that issue. Thus decreasing de desired performance. And this is where CIP31 comes in, and this is called the reference inputs. So another big upgrade, and the, the list just keeps going on, inline datums. CIP32 defines a thing called inline datums. So right now, on Cardano, the datum slash data is not stored on chain, which usually means less decentralized. You want most things to be on chain. It is stored as a hash of it on chain or as a fingerprint of it on chain. And it's up to the developer or the user to include it when they're interacting with the script. With CIP32, users slash developers are going to be able to actually store the data on chain, moving much closer to a truly decentralized architecture. So the last upgrade that we're gonna be talking about today is collateral outputs. Currently, collateral is required when submitting a Plutus transaction. I'm sure you guys have had to set it in your wallet, your eternal wallet. Usually the user won't have to spend the collateral with every transaction, and this was actually designed to stop DDoS attacks on chain. Some bad implementations in certain wallets may result in the loss of collateral funds. Now with CIP40, the collateral that you include is just enough to cover what you need to stop the loss of collateral funds by accident. I personally know that Liquid Finance and Ardana and many other projects are all waiting for the Vassal hard fork before they get launched. That doesn't mean they're gonna come out the next day. However, this is very exciting. Um, honestly, that's really the end of the video. That sums everything up. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you like, make sure you comment down below. If you made it till the end, please comment. I'm excited for Ardana down below. Uh, that will let me know you made it till the end and that also enters you into the giveaway. The other thing you have to do to enter the giveaway is join the Discord server down below. Once you join the Discord server, you go to the giveaways tab, and then within the giveaways tab, you react with a confetti symbol. Once you first join the Discord server for the first time ever, you do have to fill out the CAPTCHA. But that is the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, sorry uh, if I seem a little sick today. I am still a little under the weather, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.